Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Els Basketball Training and today I'm going to show you, in my opinion, the best basketball defense plays for shorter basketball teams. So hello everyone, my name is Alan from Els Basketball Training. If you're new to this channel, on this channel I show you basketball plays, drills, and skills. So if you like that stuff, hit that like button and subscribe. But anyways... Let's get down to the clipboard. These, in my opinion, are the best defenses that you can run with shorter basketball teams. So if you've got a very short team, these might be very good for you. And if you would like and you want to run these defenses, just, just share the, the YouTube link with your players. They'll love it. It gives them one extra way of learning the actual defense. So let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. So first, I'm going to start off with a press defense. This is a full court press, which means that we are basically running and trying to get these players, the opponents, the offensive players, to get trapped in these corners. The reason for that is because if we can trap them, this is these. let's say these two players are our two players, and we've trapped them in this corner. The reason, they cannot go back, and we're stopping them from going forwards, which is good. Which means that they're trapped, they can't go anywhere. Because if they went back, it would be over and back. And that's a turnover, which is good. So the first is a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. And with this, basically, this is our leader. He is the player who is going to go and defend. Let's say player one just got the ball inbounded to him. He is the one who's going to defend player one straight up. Now, if there was another player and this ball was passed over to him, player one is going to continue over to him. These players, this is how I run the 1 2 1 1. I want them to not go past the point, the top of the three point line. They are not going past that. They're not going up this way. If they go up that way, it's going to weaken the defense. We don't want that. They, we want these guys to stay home. So that now, let's say this player starts going up the, the side, which is good. We want him to do that. That's going to bring player 3 over to continue that, that transition, that happening. Plus, that's going to bring player 2 over to the middle. The reason we don't want player 1 to get that ball going up the middle Remember, again, he is staying home. He is staying on this side of the point, of the top of the three-point line. So by doing that, he is staying home, which means that, sure, player one can get the ball. But guess what's going to happen now? Player one has no other direction but to go this way, which is now going to bring player three over. And player one is going to catch up and continue that direction this way, which is what we want. And eventually, that's what's going to happen. He is going to get trapped in that corner. And when that happens, these players are going to be playing a zone in this area. Nothing should be allowed up the middle. That is a no-go if that happens. If a basketball makes it to the middle and makes it straight. Any kind of forward progression up the middle is bad. That's not good. I don't like that. That doesn't happen with my teams. If it does... Then we get to look at more tapes as to figure out why that happened and how to correct that. I'm usually a pretty nice coach, though. Eh, usually. Anyways, going on to the second pressure defense that I like to run with a shorter team. This is what we call a 2-2-1. Two, two, Basically, the idea behind this is, again, nothing going up the middle. We don't want anything going up, getting forward progression up the middle. The only forward progression we want is up the sidelines so that they can get trapped here which would make me very happy. And when this happens, basically we want these players to never pass on the other side of the half. That's the key on this one. And we want these two back players to never go on the other side of the half court line. That's also not a very happy thing for me to see. And what we're going to see here and have done here is... Player 1 is going to be starting to go up the sideline, which is going to bring player 1, player 3 over to the middle, and player 4 closer to this sideline. The reason for that is, let's say player 3 wants to get the reversal over to this side. Then we're going to have player get 3 get the reversal, which is going to bring player 1 and 2 close together so that nothing goes up the middle, and that's going to spread out or Closer, depending on what other players are doing in that area. We don't want anything going up the middle. I don't care about the sidelines. I care about the middle. 
sideline is harder to get the ball up. If the ball gets swung, let's say we get another player over to that side, and the ball gets swung over to that side, he's going to get some forward progression. That's totally fine. These two players have to remember that if the ball is here, imaginary line is here, they need to get on this side of it. Also, for being having a basketball on that side, player one needs to move over, player three moves over, player four and two cover middle of the court. Meanwhile, player five, he is covering this whole area, so it depends on who is in that area. Generally, he'll be playing somewhere in that area. This is what we want. We want player five to go up to the sideline and get trapped. That is how I play in this area with a 2-2-1 press. And this is a fantastic play to run with a shorter team because generally they're more agile and quick and able to run more, which is why I like to stack the front court, what I like to call the front court, which is the, the side that we're not playing defense on, just because with shorter teams, they can run a lot more. Now going over to a half court defense, what I like to personally run is man to man or my 1-4. The reason for the 1-4 is everything below the free throw line is a double team. It doesn't matter if it's here, 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 or here. Those are all double team positions, spots, whatever. And anything up here is single coverage with the point guard or our most athletic player. If you want to get that book or check it out, it's, well, the link is in the description. It's called the Unbeatable Basketball Defense. Now going over to defenses that you will most likely see or use yourself. Basically, uh, well, let's get some of these players off the court. I personally love to run a 3-2 zone defense with a shorter basketball team. That way we can stack the top and we don't have to worry as much about the bottom. Look at that. That looks like a smiley face. But anyways, so what we are trying to do is, of course, I know huge weakness along the baseline. I always preach if a team is running a 3-2 zone defense, you need to attack the baseline because it's always going to be open. But going on from there, basically we are able to match up against a shorter team as well. Look, another smiley face. And that just makes everything so much better when you have a short team. But with a shorter team, I really like to run the 3-2 my 1-4 just because I created it for one, but also because it works really, really good. And also the the man-to-man -man defense. Anyways, I hope that you have enjoyed. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe. You can run some of these plays yourself. If you do, let us know in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for videos, let me know again in the comments below. I like to take recommendations and I usually 99.9% .9 of the time get back to you unless it's spam. Don't be posting spam. Anyways, I'll see you guys again tomorrow because I post new videos every single day. Basically, through Skype, I can train with you one on one or one on a group, one or the other. So if you are interested in that, click the link in the description. It's called Online Basketball Training. Basically, we'll be using Skype to be able to train with you. All you need to do is have a set of wireless headphones, a cell phone, tablet, or a laptop with a webcam, and we are able to train one-on-one. -on -one. All you need to do is take it to your local gym, as long as they have Wi-Fi, or to the park, or you can do it in your backyard, and we can I can help you become a better basketball player. Hello, so if you have liked this video, click over here to subscribe, or maybe over here, depending on which side I put it on, I don't know yet. Anyways, uh, also the opposite direction or the opposite side is another video you may like. So I hope to see you again in one of those next videos. Yeah.